Welcome back. In some reaches of Colorado's Rocky Mountains, the spectacular views come with somber memories. Here's Landon Hall. Ah, Colorado's high country, home to breathtaking views of the peaks, the valleys, the forests, and the rivers. But the spectacle isn't confined only to nature. Accidents generally that were above 10,000 feet in the mountains, and there's a fair number of them, were pretty much by and large left there. Frozen in time at dozens of sites across Colorado is airplane wreckage from decades yore. Perhaps the most famous and the most accessible is just off I-70 east of Loveland Pass, where the Wichita State University football team plane crashed into a mountainside in 1970. But debris from similar crashes is left behind along trails on the western sides of Colorado Springs, Fort Collins, and along the Continental Divide. So why is this? Many of the crashes date back to the World War II era, which was a much different time in Colorado aviation. There were actually 11 airfields in the state of Colorado that had military flying activities going on at them. In addition to all the military activities going on, there were a number of smaller general aviation airfields that were providing uh, a civilian pilot training program for colleges. That was aviation archaeologist Brian Richardson, who says crowded skies only complicated already difficult conditions over the Rockies. By and large, we have about 320 good days of flying weather in the state of Colorado. However, when the weather reared its ugly head, it could be real bad. The problem is, whenever there was a lot of moisture in the air or uh, storms, there would be a lot, great deal of static, and you really had to strain to hear the signal coming in over the headset through all of the static. And that was responsible for a number of accidents out here that we're aware of. Now, decades later, many of the remains make for extraordinary hiking destinations, preserved, as the National Forest Service tells us, because the high altitude locations can make recovery impossible or extremely costly. So, an expert's advice to those wanting to visit? Be very, very careful. First, a warning. These airplanes were impacting the ground at, at 180, 200, 300 miles an hour and being shredded. So you have a lot of jagged, rough edges. And then a plea. Many, many, many of these crash sites are, are actually graves. Please treat them with reverence and respect. And if you need to take a souvenir, maybe just snap a photo. The bottom line is these sites are starting to disappear at a pretty phenomenal rate, the ones that are still in the wild. For Denver 7, I'm Landon Hoff. Denver 7 Digital Journalist Stephanie Butzer took an in-depth look at this phenomenon. She's sharing the history behind a dozen of these plane crashes and an interactive map of where you can find them. That's up right now on the DenverChannel.com.